Okay, we're looking at using and interpreting graphs. We'll first look at just reading graphs in general and you know what does it all mean. Um, then we'll go on to displacement and velocity time graphs. And then finally, we'll look at instantaneous rates of change. So yeah, first of all, uh, what do we mean by reading graphs? What are graphs? What's the whole point of it? Um, let's just start off an example and we'll kind of go through and we'll, um, we'll create our um, example as, as we go. So I'm going to draw a, draw a graph here and it's going to be a, let's say it's going to be a cost per hour graph. We're going to, we're going to look at how much something costs per hour. Um, let's say we're going to throw a party and um, we're going to hire Elton John to play the party. Well, Elton's quite expensive. Um, he charges uh, £20,000 just to show up on the day. Um, and then for every hour that we want him to play, he charges an additional uh, £10,000. So uh, it's going to cost us a fair bit of money. So it's, it's going to be after the first hour, it's an additional £10,000. So that we'd, we'd, we'd then owe kind of £30,000. And same again, after the second hour, it's another £10,000. And so in total, we would owe £40,000 and so on. You can kind of start to see the, the, general, um, the general rule here. Right? We're getting this um, nice straight line appearing. So we get... Uh, we got our line there. And we, we've just cr constructed a graph. Um, so, you know, if we were to kind of come to, to this graph completely blind and not know, really know what we're, we're looking at here, well, we know that the y-intercept always represents the the starting amount. Yes, you know, the initial amount just to, you know, just for him to show up. Or it could be the starting amount, you know, when you sit into a taxi and the meter's already running, is, is usually three or four, four pounds just to sit in a taxi. Or it could be you know the cover charge that a restaurant might charge for to sit down at a table. So this is our our y intercept is our kind of starting um, charge in a way. And uh, if we look at what the the gradient represents, well we know that as you know when we move along one in the x direction, we move up by whatever Elton John's hourly rate is. Right. This is this is our this is our hourly rate here. In this case, it's ten thousand pounds. And we know that if we if we look at this, if we want to find the gradient of a graph, well, the gradient of the graph is just change in y over change in x. Well, in this case, the change in y is the hourly rate. It's just it's just the rate that Elton charges, and the change in x is just one, right? So it's just rate over one is just rate. I'm actually going to put this on a on a new line. So we know that the gradient of this graph represents the hourly rate. Right, let's look at uh, displacement time graphs now. So um, let's say um, Elton's played for three hours and um, we we actually don't want to pay him. Right, We haven't got any money. We, we completely made the whole thing up. Um, and um, we, we've got to sneak off from the party and avoid uh, Elton finding out. So we start to sneak off from the party. So this is our this is our displacement uh, time graph that we're looking at here. This could be in, you know, in meters. This could be in uh, minutes or hours. It doesn't really matter. Um, then, you know, let's say for you know the first twenty minutes, uh, we we sneak off slowly, and Nelson doesn't suspect a thing. Well, then he finds out, and we've got to pick up the pace. We've got to start running, and we've we've now got to increase our you know the rate at which we escape. So we've got to go from a gentle uh, sculp into a into a run, and you know this could be at, at forty minutes. Um, after 40 minutes, we're able to um, hide from Elton and we can stop and take a break. So that'll be our displacement time graph as we run away from, from Elton. Um, we can now look at the velocity time graph. So what's the velocity? Um, what's happening with the velocity? Well, you know, let's let's look at the same scenario, right? Our, our velocity is going to be in um, meters per second. And again, we'll, we'll look at time in minutes. And so for the first 20 minutes, um, we've got a fairly, you know, fairly low velocity, right? We're, we're just sneaking off for the first 20 minutes. And obviously, as soon as we get found out, we've got to break into a run. So our velocity drastically increases and we go from walking to running. Now, after 40 minutes, obviously, we were able to take a break and hide somewhere and we can we can finally stop moving. And so that would be our um, velocity time graph. And what we see is that the velocity... Um, actually represents the gradient of our uh, displacement time graph, right? We, we end up with, you know, the between zero and 20 minutes, we have a small gradient. So our velocity is small. You know, if we were to actually calculate the gradient, <clears throat> we could, uh, we could, you know, mathematically link the two together. The gradient at that point there, or, you know, in general at any point, you know, the gradient is just, again, it's the change in y over the change in x. Well, in this case, that means 
the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Well, the amount, you know, the distance we travel divided by the time it takes us is just equal to our velocity. So you know, the gradient of our displacement time graph is our velocity. And the same applies to velocity acceleration, right? It's the exact same analog. Um, the gradient of our velocity time graph is our acceleration. Right, let's look at the instantaneous rate of change. So um, let's say after um, after we've had a break, you know, after the first um, hour, you know, we get to we get to an hour, um, we uh, we're finally able to um, hop in a car and, and properly escape. So um, after after an hour, um, again, this is going to be time. Um, after the first hour, um, we can hop in a car, and so our acceleration uh, of the car, well, let, let's look at the velocity time graph and we'll calculate acceleration from that. So let's look at what happens in the next 40 minutes. So we hop in our car and we are able to um, really pick up the pace in the car and then we reach, you know, we start to reach the car's maximum speed. And so we kind of level off at maybe 80, 80 miles an hour. Well, if we, you know, if we wanted to look at our acceleration at any point on this, on this graph, you know, if we were to look at the acceleration at that point there, as I said, the acceleration is the gradient of the velocity time graph, right? It's just all we're doing is change in y divided by change in x. And in this case, it's um, change in t because t is on our x-axis. Well, we know the change in velocity over change in time is just acceleration. <laughs> but it's not that simple to calculate the gradient at this point, right? What we can do is we can estimate it by drawing a tangent um, to the graph at that point. And the gradient of this this gradient will therefore be a really good estimate of our instantaneous acceleration at that point in time, you know, at that point in time, at maybe, um, I don't know, uh, 85 minutes into our journey. That's the exact acceleration at that point in time. It's the gradient of that tangent to our curve. All right, let's dive into um, a couple of exam style questions now. So Bill's a tax driver. Um, we've got a graph for how much it costs um, per per mile, in this case, for a taxi journey. Um, and for each journey, there's a fixed charge plus a charge for the distance. So what's the fixed charge? Well, you know, just like we had with Elton, right? It's it's what, you know, what we're charged initially, as soon as we sit down, basically, or as soon as, as, soon as something happens, as soon as we start off. In this case, it's, you know, it's what the meter uh, will display as soon as we sit in the taxi. Well, that, that point there, it's gonna be five pounds, right? It's between zero and 10, so. That's our fixed charge is five pounds. Um, we want to work out the difference between the two journeys. So if one journey is uh, 10 miles further than another journey, well, because it's a straight line, it doesn't really matter where we take it from, right? I could do the difference between going no miles and going 10 miles. Well, if I, if I travel zero miles, I pay five pounds. If I travel 10 miles, I can see I have to pay 20 pounds. And so, all I have to do is I work out the difference between those two values. It's going to be 20 minus 5, and I get 15 pounds. You know, I could double check this, right? I could do the difference between 10 and 20. Well, if I travel 20 miles, I'm going to end up paying uh, 35 pounds. And the difference between 20 and 35, again, is 15 pounds. Right, final question. We've got a velocity time graph. Um, for a car for the first 50 seconds. And we want to work out the the average acceleration during the 50 seconds. So I'm going to underline average here. So we're really focusing on average. Well, why have I underlined that? It's because it doesn't really matter for a velocity time graph. If we're looking at the average acceleration, it doesn't really, really matter what we're doing, right? We could be doing this. As long as we end up, um, you know, at the same um, velocity at the end of it, after... Um, you know, the full 50 seconds, our average acceleration um, is going to be the same. And so what we can do is we can actually take it to the other extreme. We can basically say that, I'm going to use a, the ruler actually for this to make it slightly neater. We can say that this is, you know, basically the path that we take. And if we're calculating the acceleration, well, we know the acceleration is just the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So the change in velocity is going to be 30. The change in time is going to be 50. Well, that's just the same as 3 over 5 if I divide the top and the bottom by 10, which is also the same as 6 over 10, 
which is just 0.6. So I know my acceleration is 0.6 meters per second squared. Finally, part B, estimate the time during the 50 seconds when the instantaneous acceleration equals the average acceleration. So we've just calculated the average acceleration. We know it's, you know, the, the average acceleration is, is equal to, to this gradient here, right? We've, we've calculated the change in, change in y over that change in x. So, you know, if we're, if we're going to try and match the instantaneous acceleration to this acceleration, we want to find a point on the graph where our, um, our gradient on, on, this, on this curve um, is equal to the gradient of this line. Well, and you know, in that case, you know, just eyeballing it for a second, it's, it's probably going to be about that point there, right? I might just move that onto, uh, at least onto a square. It's going to be probably that point there. And we could test this, right? So again, I can I can draw the gradient to to the to the curve at this point. Um, it's going to be roughly that. I might move it down slightly, and we end up um, we end up drawing a line that is parallel that is parallel to um, my original my original line and I've just realized I've just left it on the um, on the wrong tool I'll put that back on there um, so we know that these two lines here and here oh I'm on the root tool these two lines that line there and that line there are parallel to each other right and so therefore that point there in time is going to be our um, our corresponding time where our instantaneous velocity is equal to our um, average velocity. So our answer would be, uh, you know, roughly, you know, again, it's an estimate, it's roughly going to be 11 seconds into our journey. Um, and that'll be our answer. So that is the end of um, reading and using and interpreting graphs.